only don't call them essential because when vitamins and minerals and their importance was first discovered, we didn't really know about phytonutrients. We knew there was something in the plants, but we didn't know exactly what they were. Anyway, they're all important. You want to lose weight? One of the fastest ways to do it is get on a nutritional supplement program. You're overeating, you're eating too much sugar. One of the fastest ways to reduce your sugar drives or your drives for food is to make sure you're getting the B vitamins. Make sure you're getting your electrolytes. Make sure you're getting your minerals. Make sure you're getting your micronutrients. This was Dr. Wallach's brilliant insight 50 years ago when he cured himself of Tourette's syndrome. He didn't call it that, but he realized there was something he wasn't getting. Well, you know, today there's something we're all not getting unless we're on a, a nutritional supplement program. That's why to the day I die, I will be talk, screaming from every rooftop I could find how important it is to get on a nutritional supplement program, a strategic one, one that's put together either by yourself strategically or by a company strategically. Diabetes is a classic example of a micronutrient deficiency disease. Yes, there's calories that are involved. Yes, sugar is involved, but the body has a way of utilizing the B complex, utilizing electrolytes, utilizing vitamin C, utilizing vitamin E, utilizing the micronutrients to help us process the sugar. This is why I say diabetes is reversible. You're looking at a micronutrient deficiency. You're looking at the wrong kinds of foods. You're also, there's also, by the way, an important relationship between the digestive system and diabetes. This is where the triangle of disease comes in. See, diabetes, it occurs after the digestive system starts to break down. It's a second disease. It's a secondary health issue. Yes, it's exacerbated by intake of foods and, and nutritional deficiencies, but it starts off, and this is something that scientists have just discovered over the last maybe 20 years or so. Diabetes starts off as dysbiosis. Messed up, D-Y-S, dis means messed up, biosis, bacteria, gut bacteria. This is the start of it all. This is the key, and it happens very, very early. Dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria begins very early. And yes, eating too much sugary foods and drinking too much sugary sodas, that's all very important. And so is nutritional deficiency, but it starts the gut. So I say, uh, we talk about the gut, we talk about intake of, of calories, we talk about micronutrients. These are all things that we have in our control. That's why, in my opinion, diabetes is, among the mo it is the most tragic of all the many health challenges we have to deal with. Diabetes is the most tragic because as ubiquitous as it is, and it is ubiquitous, if they tell you 34% of people are diabetic, you can rest assured uh, you can add another 30% of people who are have messed up blood sugar even though they're not diagnosed officially as a diabetic. That means as ubiquitous as diabetes is, and it's common, it's tragic because it is so unnecessary, it's so gratuitous, it's so easy to eliminate, to reverse. Just by making a few simple moves, a few simple moves, all you got to do, first and foremost, get yourself on your liquid nutrients, your uh, water-soluble nutrients, the Bs and Cs and electrolytes. Make sure you're restricting your intake of the foods that spike your blood sugar and focus on the gut. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with more good health information and your phone calls right after this on The Bright Side. We're back on the right side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number from the journal Diabetes Care. Hyper, too much, hyperglycemia, too much blood sugar, high blood sugar, is associated with worse outcomes for patients with, uh, without diabetes who aren't officially, officially uh, diagnosed as diabetics after they have cardiac surgery. Too much blood sugar will worsen your prognosis if you have, a heart, if you have heart surgery, if you're not a diabetic. Apparently, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Fact of the matter is, is one of the biggest problems we have in this culture is just plain old sugar. You know, up until 200 years ago, up until 200 years ago, we didn't have a lot of sugar. Sugar was just this rare thing. It was only for kings and queens. There was honey, but not concentrated essence of sweetness. So we became, the human brain became addicted or, or became compulsed, driven to find sugar because you need a little bit of sugar. If you want to 
Uh, there's a very interesting relationship between the tongue and sugar. If you're trying to get yourself off of sugar, figure out a way to numb your tongue. Peppermint. If you put peppermint on your tongue, you're not going to want sugar. You ever brush your teeth with a pepperminty toothpaste and the thought of sugar isn't so great after you have a pe- when you have a nice, clean, pepperminty taste in your mouth? If, if you could figure out a way to slightly anesthetize the tongue, peppermint will do it. Hot pepper will do it. Chili pepper will do it. You don't feel like eating sugar after you have chili pepper, although the two go together, actually. I've seen that. When your tongue is somehow deactivated, sugar doesn't sound as good. For uh, There's an old wives' tale I've been hearing for a, since I was a kid about putting sugar. I've never tried this, but supposedly it works. You put sugar on your tongue if you burn your tongue. That's because there's a very, very intimate connection between the tongue and the drive for sugar. If you can hypno- hypnotize yourself to numbing your tongue, you wouldn't want sugar. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see. Uh, before we went to break, I just well, let me just say this again because it's so important. We'll get your calls here in just a sec, so hang tight. If you're dealing with diabetes, full-blown diabetes, number one, focus on the gut. Use your nightly essence uh, uh, and restrict or limit the amount of calories you're taking in. Try to eat less food. Number two, uh, if you have sugar cravings, use more protein. Use more fat. Use the amino acid glutamine, coconut oil. Use more spices with your food, especially cinnamon. Work on things for your tongue. Kind of numb your tongue a little bit with uh, essential oil of peppermint, perhaps. Or brush your teeth a lot. Or use Listerine a lot. When your tongue and your mouth are anesthetized, especially your tongue, you're not going to feel like eating sugar. Then use your uh, water-soluble nutrients, your B-complex, the entire B-complex, but particularly vitamin B1 and B3 niacin and thiamine. Make sure you're getting all your electrolytes. Drink vegetable juices, great source of electrolytes. Make sure you're using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, great source of electrolytes. High doses of vitamin C. Make sure you're doing your fatty vitamins, especially vitamin E and vitamin A for that matter. And your minerals, selenium, sulfur, zinc, all the minerals are important. All the Mighty 90 essential nutrients are critical. And you know what, folks? When you do it all correctly, oh yeah, chromium and vanadium, when you do it all correctly, you will be blown away by what happens. And I'm not telling you this because I read it in a book. And I'm not telling you this because it makes biochemical sense. I'm telling you, although that's all true. I've read it in books and it makes biochemical sense. I'm telling you because I've seen it with my own eyes over and over and over again, more times than I can count, hundreds to thousands of times. I've seen people drop their blood sugar by using these simple strategies, no doctor required. All right, tomorrow we'll continue talking about the fatty hormone system, and I really want to get into this whole idea of inflammation versus microinflammation, and we'll finish up with Alzheimer's disease. Got so much to talk about here. Then the lymph. I definitely want to talk about the lymph. We'll do that in the coming days. On the Bright Side, time to hit the phones. Let's go to Gretchen in Ohio. Welcome to the Bright Side, Gretchen. What's going on? Hi. Hey. Um, I had a question about uh, fasting. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Exactly what do you mean by fasting? Exactly what can you take? It's think of it on a continuum. That means that there's there's the extreme fasting, which is you know don't eat anything and don't drink anything. Then there's it goes you know less extreme where you don't eat anything but maybe drink water, and then less extreme maybe where you don't eat anything but you drink just lemon juice, and then maybe less extreme where you just eat less calories and you know kind of gets less and less extreme. Anything along that continuum, as long as it involves caloric restriction, restricting your calories, is going to increase your longevity and improve your health. Anything. I okay, think once. Well, what happens? Well, I, let me just say one more thing. Intermittent fasting once every week, every couple of weeks, where you don't eat anything and you just drink water, I think that's the best. In you conjunction mean, with caloric restriction. In conjunction with just restricting your calories. Whole day you're saying you're. 24 hours. Or, or 48. Again, no. it's not. Cu- Go ahead. I decided to try yesterday. Yeah, the whole day? Well, I had eaten breakfast already, and then okay. I went to your program. And but I only drank um, water. And uh, would you- yeah, I had broth. I had chicken broth. Okay, well, that's okay. That's not quite a fast, but still, it's, it's still good. You're still on the right track. So what did you notice? Uh, I was okay yesterday. Heck okay, today right? I got, today I got up, and... Um, <laughs> Terrible. Uh, um, you were like tired and fit- tired. I, my stomach feels like it's you good. know. Good. 
Absolutely Good. nothing in it. I- awesome. Awesome. Let me tell you what's happening, okay? You're, uh, when you first start a fast, when you first start the fasting process, you want to be like in bed. You want to be, you know, relaxed because you're not getting a lot of food. That your, bo- your body's not getting a lot of uh, uh, calories that it's used to getting. So it's going to start to mobilize some emergency. It's going to think it's going through an emergency. So you just relax. Take a bath. Sit, sit in the hot tub. Just relax. Okay. Now, hey, if you I, have to, if you, I, hang on one more thing, Gretchen. If you have to go to work or you have to participate in your day, you can't just relax. Get some bone soup. Or the BTT, liquid nutrition, okay, or vegetable juice, or vegetable soup. Well, let me tell you a little bit more. I weighed 125 pounds yesterday, and this morning I weighed 122, and I really can't afford to to lose weight. You don't know that. How do you know that? You see, when you lose weight, you lose fat. I feel weak. Okay, that's what I'm, that's good. That's that's all, I understand what you're saying. Get some bone soup, uh, chicken soup. Or get some vegetable juice. Do you, are you have a you have a blender, Gretchen, of a, a Vitamix? Yeah. Go make some celery juice, and then call me back, and I guarantee you, one hundred percent, you're going to feel better with just celery juice and salt. All right. Go get some. Can you do it now? And I'll, I'm going to take some I, more calls, and you call me back, okay? Celery yeah. juice and salt. If you have I mean, Celtic. Yeah. One other thing. I yeah. have. Uh, I just start back taking the BTT this morning because I yeah. couldn't stand just. You know, having broth. Okay. That has helped. I don't feel okay. bad with that in my stomach. Okay. That's but good. But my problem that I wanted to start this fasting on to see if it would help was I had this terrible, terrible pain in the morning. I sleep fairly well, but the minute I try to get up in the morning, I can hardly lift the covers off my like upper a, shoulders. Just like a joint me. pain or a muscle pain kind of thing? More, I think, more muscle pain. Okay, but well, here's, I don't here, be joint here's, I would, what's, here's what's I, happening, Gretchen. Let me, explain the mechan- let me explain to you what's happening, sweetheart, okay? And I got a bunch of calls, so I'm going to have to let you go after this. When we sleep, our, ta- our uh, circulatory system pulls up, especially our lymph system. And that means toxicity, because the lymph is supposed to drain toxins, will start to pool up. And it will tend to pool up in the joints. So it's very common if we're accumulating toxicity for us to wake up in the morning sore. That's a sign that your body, that your circulatory system is not moving correctly. And it sounds like you've got a lot of things going on there. If you want to if make a big difference, stretch before you go to bed, stretch after you wake up do stretching exercises and then also if you can get on a rebound or something to move your lymphatic system that will help as well but that's all reasons why you want to continue fasting Gretchen and I got a full board here I wish I could talk to you because you you, you got some interest okay we're back on the bright side I had to let Gretchen go but she was raising some very interesting points when you wake up in the morning and you're sore and it's very common especially as we get older, these are signs that uh, this is a sign that the circulatory system, the lymphatic part of the circulatory system, which we're going to be talking about, that's the part of the circulation that carries poisons and toxins and wastes, particularly digestive uh, detritus, garbage, stuff that's not processed correctly from the, from the digestive system. And uh, when, we lay down at be- uh, when we lay down for eight hours, it tends to pool up, and it'll pool up in the uh, one of the places it can pool up is in the joints and in the muscles. And it's not uncommon to wake up uh, uh, sore. Uh, Gretchen was also saying, I talked to her a little bit off the air. She was saying how it, it happens every 20 minutes. If she's not moving, if she's sitting for 20 minutes or half an hour straight and she doesn't get up and move, she gets sore. And these are all signs that the lymphatic circulation is starting to, uh, to become clogged. That means you got to move your body. And deep breathing, by the way, is one of the best ways to improve lymphatic circulation and all circulation, not to mention a great way to get oxygen into your system. Okay, 844-236-6010, Russ in Alabama. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Vin. Hey. Um, so I am uh, uh, welcome to any suggestions about natural ways to conduce sleepiness. I need to sleep when I need to sleep. But my foremost question is that um, since I've tried so many things that proved to be ineffectual, if one felt like he had to resort to a trazodone or an Ambien or uh, something like that, um, uh, firstly, I would like to know which prescription knockout pills would have the fewest and most benign side effects. 
You know, that, that's a, you get asked, you're raising a couple interesting questions. Let me, let's take the first one first. If you're taking a prescription drug, if you feel like you absolutely need a prescription drug, uh, you know, and, and I'm not judging anybody for that I'm, uh, it, by any means, that means that you have to take extra care with your nutrition. Number one, nutrition to help you detoxify. Number two, uh, uh, nutrition that helps your uh, 